So, <coughs> so what we would like to do, do next is to is to find what you call the infinitesimal generator. Okay. Infinitesimal generator for an eco processor. They have been given an eco process how to find the infinitesimal generator of it. Okay. Usually whenever we say you know talk of for example infinitesimal generator we we talk of what you call the semigroups actually in the a, 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 uh, in a, a family of um, one parameter linear bounded maps on some Banach spaces actually anyway but the idea is pretty much analog so here's a definition and then we will try to compute the infinitesimal generator for the eto process actually okay? So what is the definition? Definition is this. So imagine I have a stochastic process x of t. Okay. If t is bigger than or equal to 0. And imagine my initial condition x of 0 is x mod actually. Okay. By generator of process xt I mean an operator okay and I'm calling this operator a and this operator when operated onto a function f so it's defined through a limit actually so when operate this operator f is operated onto a function f so this is equal to a limit t goes to zero of expectation of f of x t given you know given x not equal to x so it's it's really the it's really like the de definition of the derivative actually okay so expectation let me call this as expectation of f of x t so this is really a conditional expectation so that what is the expectation of f of x t given that x naught was x actually that's what it means minus f of x divided by t okay so infinitesimal generator of an eto process is what it's an operator a okay so and how, how do we define an operator? So this operator is defined through this infinitesimal limit actually. Okay. And what is this infinitesimal limit? So the conditional expectation of f of x t given that x naught was x minus f of x by t actually. Okay. Where I should write this ex of f of x t explicitly that this is equal to the conditional expectation of f of x t given x naught is x. Okay, that's what it means. Okay. This has a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, you know, what you call beautiful um, applications. Actually, I think you know, Fatah is reading it. How he has read something out of it. So what we can do is that we can, what we can do. So we can, we can do this that. You know, you, you have a problem actually. Okay, so you have, for example, and you know, a problem: partial f of partial two, and f of u and u of zero equal to, for example, u naught. So it's a very abstract problem in Hilbert spaces. Then I want to find the solution. Okay. So how can I show that the solution of such a system exists? Okay. So. And we will see its connection basically in a minute as well with such kind of problems. So the solution of um, such kind of a problem exists. So you have a theorem which is called the Hilly Yoshida theorem which tells you that if this solution has a semigroup associated and that semigroup has an infinitesimal generator, 
then such kind of problems is going to have a solution actually. And what is a semigroup? So a semigroup simply is a is okay is a machine that swallows initial condition and gives you a trajectory of the solution of this problem actually. In a simple language. Okay? Okay? So if the trajectories of so in other words, what you are saying is that if the trajectories of these solutions are generated by an operator, an infinitesimal operator, you can find its unique solution. Okay. okay. This statement is really a lot by waving hands actually, I know. Alright. But you know this infinitesimal generator plays a really a pivotal role in theory of PDEs actually. I mean, if you are interested, you can do analysis of PDEs in that state. Okay, so, so, what is, what is, so what we have to keep so far, so if I have a process and I want to find its generator, infinitesimal generator, just compute this limit. And I want to compute this limit for an incompleto process actually. Okay, let's see that what infinitesimal generator we get for it actually. Okay? Okay. So consider an Eto process. Okay. Consider an Eto process. Dxt. So I'm using his notation, which is b of xt dt plus sigma of xt and dw. Okay. <laughs> And x of zero is x naught. Where this Brownian motion is not a one-dimensional Brownian motion, but it's n-dimensional Brownian motion. Okay, where the each component is a one-dimensional Brownian motion. I mean, if you wish, you can keep it. For example, just one dimension. Okay. You can keep it one dimension as well. But let's let's do it the way it is doing actually. Okay. So if this W T is a vector, you can interpret this as a vector as well actually. So D W T is really you know can treat it as a vector. So, what will be the sigma and b? So, this so it's, it's a matrix equation, a kind of a matrix equation, where the b is a, a map from, you know, rn to rn, while the sigma is a map from rn to rn cross m, okay? and they are measurable. It is same as we wrote that um, you know um, eto process in n dimension. Do you remember we we wrote you know the n dimensional eto process where each component is an eto process as well? Okay. Remember we wrote something like this. We said that d x i of t is you know, f i of t dt plus then I have g i of t plus f i j of t and d w j of t where I have a sum that goes from j equal to 1 to m. Yeah, then. So it's really a matrix form of it. So instead of f and g, I'm just writing B and what do you call sigma. Where the each process, component process, is not depending on just one ground in motion but n ground in motion. Okay? N ground in motion. So just keep that in head. So it's a vectorial form of it actually. Let's consider f of xp. Because if you want to compute 
infinitesimal generator, you have to compute the conditional expectation of f of x t minus f of x and divide by t and then compute this limit. So let's have f of x t and give it a name f t. Okay? Let's give this a name f t. So what would be the dynamics of f t? What would be the dynamics of f t? So the dynamics of f t is going to be a sum. It's going to be a sum. Okay, i equal to one to n partial f by partial x i into d x i. Okay, evaluated at x of t times d x i of t. ठीक है? Partial derivatives plus then double sum. Okay, so it's really applying the equal lemma. One half some i j okay that goes from uh, that's not right goes from so both goes from 1 to n so partial 2 f by partial x i x j okay evaluated at x t times d x i evaluated at t times d x j evaluated at t okay so really applying this vectorial kind of a <clears throat> what if each of this dxi of t so the dxi of t is bi of x of t where the bi is a component of b plus sum okay so if it is n dimensional ground in motion, so it goes from k equal to 1 to n, sigma i k, okay, sigma i k evaluated at x t times d w k of t. So it's really the same vector equation that you have actually there. Okay? What was the Eto table for it, do you remember? So if I have, um, you know, dt, dxi, t, dxj, tr, maybe d, i, d, w, i, t, and dt and d, w, j, t, then what was the outcome? So this would be 0, 0, 0 and this would be delta ij. Delta ij. Right? Times dt. Right? Times dt. Times dt. Times dt squared. Dt squared. It, would, it would convert into. Okay. So we have. But dt square agar ho to 0 now. Sir, it was just dt, I think. Simple dt. Okay. Take it. So you have. It. So what would be dx i t? So, so I would like to just compute this now. So what would be this and what would be this? <laughs> So what would be dx i t and dx j t actually with this description? Obviously, I'm going to have a dt here. So what are you going to get? So the first term will go away, right? And uh, so for first term multiplied by first term of this, so the dt dt will go away. Okay. So in this you have a dt. So the first term of this would be with the first term of this and the first with the second will also go away, second with the first will also go away. So the only last term would survive actually. Okay. And what would be the last term? Remember? So it's going to be sigma i k. Okay. And sigma j k. Okay. Times 
the sum that k goes from 1 to f theek hai and dd because think about it this is not just one term okay this is not a one term so this sum would be multiplied by so sum in this term would be multiplied by a sum in this term think about it is to expand it all so expand it in your head and expand it in your head actually so you know it it will it will not be just one sigma and sigma j there would be a sum theek hai so this is what you are going to get so what is this i can write this as that take your sigma matrix transpose it and take its ij identity so this is going to be really okay so the sigma sigma transpose times xj identity theek hai and now let me Boring, but these are the kind of things that now you should. If you have to give it, then you should be able to, you know, figure out and learn for yourself. You don't need a lecture to do it. Okay. I say, I say, I don't dull. The more mature stuff, the real learning is that figuring this out for yourself. I mean, why I'm telling you all these details? Where is your learning? Okay. But you know, since this is your first course, so. Oh, I'm just going through it, okay? But there are gaps that I'm leaving. So what would be DFT? Finally, so the DFT finally is going to be so the i j term of sigma i j dt, and in this you will have a term with the dt and a term with the Brownian motions. So, so the term with the dt will be combined with the term with dt here, and a plus Brownian motion term. So I'm just writing it directly. Okay. So what you're going to get? So you're going to get this. So the one half of sum i j double sum of partial to f by partial x i partial x j. So the first term. Okay. Plus what? Sum of b i partial f by partial x i, right? And d t plus and and obviously evaluated everything at x t and d t, okay? Plus sum over k where k goes from one to n. Of it's going to be i k at double sum. It's still going to be a double sum. Partial f by partial x i of x t times sigma i k and d w k of t. Agree? अच्छा Uh, so we should write it a separate sum actually. So this should be a separate sum and this should be a separate sum. Up to you. Up to you. Up to you. So think about it. Here's the thing. So substitute your sigma sigma transpose ij dt here. 
ठीक है तो एक टर्म ये हो जाएगी and then partial f by partial x of x t is multiplied by this value dx t so dx t is what ye value jo this so so there will be two sums ha huh? i have different this one comes are sigma sigma transpose hote hain wo dono kya tha ah this this should be huh? yes sigma sigma transpose and ij theek hai to the wo to hum hoshar aaya tha theek hai Sigma sigma transpose and ij. So it's a very generic argument. I mean, if you want to, for example, do it, you may do it for once, for example, one dimension drawing motion, but I'm writing it for generic. ठीक है? अब समझ आ रही है बात? So in this dxt, you'll have two terms actually. So the one with the dt, so it would be added with this partial derivative, and the other is going to be this actually. But since you have a sum here. So that is going to make a double sum, ठीक है? So that's going to make a double sum. So you have to have this, ठीक है? So what would be F T now? So if you write, if you want to write it in the integral term, so it's going to be one half. Okay. One half. So zero to P, the same thing, X S D S plus, ठीक है? One half as well, but okay, but, but the same thing depending on x s b s plus. Take it sum zero to t sigma i k and partial f by partial x okay x i evaluated at x s and So it's going to be simply x not. As I said, and f of x not is going to be simply f of x actually because we have treated x not to be. Uh, let's call this only x. ठीक है? Is it making sense? And what would be? कंडीशनल एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ एफ ऑफ एक्स क्या होगी कंडीशनल एक्सपेक्टेशन एफ ऑफ एक्स की गिवन एक्स गिवन एक्स सो देयर इज नो रैंडमनेस एक्चुअली सो इट वुड बी एफ ऑफ एक्स इट सेल्फ देखो ना आप कहते हैं कंप्यूट एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ कंडीशनल एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ एफ ऑफ एक्स टी गिवन एक्स नॉट Equal to x actually, but now so we are simply computing the you know the conditional expectation of f of x actually. Okay, so it should be f of x itself actually. ठीक है? अब इसका नतीजा क्या निकल रहा है? नतीजा ये निकल रहा है कि on this f I am applying now conditional expectation on both sides. Okay, conditional expectation on both sides. So when I'm going to apply a conditional expectation of both sides, so e x of f t So you will have equal to f of x plus e, uh, conditional expectation of this entire sum actually. Sorry. Not right here. ठीक हो गया? And this sum is an integral, zero to t. ठीक है? Ah, okay. Let's 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 not go too, in too hurry, and let's just quickly. So let me write this. So I'm gonna have plus e x here and e x here, right? That's it, okay? Okay. So now tell me, what would be this expectation? 
Dog eat expectation. Must be zero. It's in the stochastic antagonist. Should be zero. Mm. If you don't remember normal distribution. Before okay, I can remind I can remind you. Because I, I have I have in my head actually when we did this. Before the you know the last lecture of um, what do you call second bit actually. If you remember, we talked about conditional, you know, uh, uh, expectation of a stochastic integral actually. So we said that there, there is also going to be a conditional isoiotrometry, okay, and the conditional expectation of a stochastic integral, okay. So the conditional expectation of this stochastic integral is going to be what you call zero. So the term that is going to survive is going to be this ex, let me write it explicitly, of the integral of 0 to t, okay, of this double sum, one half double sum ij, whatever, plus this single sum, and ds, okay. So I want to compute a generator. Minus so let's minus. let's take this here. Let's break this here. Okay? And divide this by t. And divide this by t. And take a limit. T goes to zero. T goes to this. Are you getting the point? So what would be this now? What would be this? How this can be interpreted? So, I have this conditional expectation divided by t and I am saying that t goes to 0. So, this is really like the situation of, I mean, if you wish, you can take this t inside actually. Mm -hmm. Okay? You take the limit inside. There is nothing hard in it. And then, this is really the situation of what you call second fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, and doing so it's, so it's like you have an integral and you want to differentiate it. So you want to differentiate it with respect to time. So it's going to get rid of this integral actually. Okay. Get rid of. So what is it? Huh? 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 So I have a zero to t here. And ds here, okay, and I have this ex, and I'm saying that divide this guy by t and let's take t to zero, okay. Now this is really a situation for which you can say it's really what do you call doing the differentiation under the integral sign actually, okay. Doing the differentiation under the integral sign, so this limit, okay is really going to get rid of the integral actually. Okay? And what would remain? So whatever would be remain is your infinitesimal generator. Okay? Is your infinitesimal generator. Okay? So you can see this detail. I'll upload these notes. So the infinitesimal generator here is really By taking limit, infinitesimal generator. So in other words, this limit when you will compute limit t goes to zero, t x of say f t minus f of x over t. So you will have this integral free expression actually. So it's going to be one half of the double sum. Ij sigma sigma transpose Ij and partial 2f by partial xi partial xj of x plus sum double sum over Ik simple k and Bk and partial f by partial xk. So this drift, okay. So this drift really is the infinitesimal 
generator of what you call an ETO process actually. So the drift is the equivalent decimal generator of the ETO process okay, that you have. Okay. okay, I know th th there are things which need to be figured out, but you know you can read it. It's not difficult. You went through the process and you have it. 